Hi, I'm Hannah Garrity, um, and this year for ISM I'm doing secondary education. So let me start off by telling you a little bit about myself. Um, I strive to be the best daughter, sister, Christ follower, and leader I can be. M traits that I would say that I have are um, I'm trustworthy, bonest, bonest. I just combined honest and bold. I'm bold, honest, and headstrong. Some of the activities that I enjoy, um, I am devoid devoted to my family, my church, sports, and music. What's most important to me is the leadership that I um, have in my church youth group. Other interests I have include hanging out with my friends and my family, watching and going to sporting events, uh, and playing piano and harp. My quote for ISM this year is, I am not what, I, what has happened to me, I am what I choose to become. I feel like that says pretty much what I want to do in ISM this year. I don't let the past affect me all that much. I just try and move forward and be the best I can. My topic, as I said earlier, is secondary education as it relates to U.S. history. I chose this because I have a passion and a love for teaching and history. I think that um, you can make a difference if you're a teacher. You can help mold the minds of the future generations. And with history, I specifically like U.S. I think that's the most interesting, the one that intrigues me the most. But um, I love history in general, whether it be European, world, whatever. What causes passion is my dad and the experiences that I've had over the years. My dad has a passion for history also and we get to relate on that level. We get to read fun books together and um, watch documentaries, as boring as that sounds. It's a lot of fun for me and him. And the experiences I've had, I taught or I teach um, middle school girls at my church and I teach as a job, I teach kindergartners. So I think that that's beneficial to my future career path and that's exciting. My research started with a career outlook assessment that was just depressing. Teachers are, especially history teachers, are mainly coaches and they're mainly male and it's hard to find a job for a female that's just out of college and wants to do history and doesn't coach anything. After that, I did seven interviews within four days, which was intense to start. I did all those, I believe, in September, maybe early October. And they were back to back to back to back. And it was just crazy and hectic and it's like a welcome to some kind of thing. Uh, after that, I wrote um, assessments over all of the interviews. And I did it right after I had the interview, so it was still fresh on my mind. And it really let me examine how the interview went and think of all the details and all that fun stuff. The last thing I did was in this field as there as a lot of other fields, you have to try and figure out what things stand for, the PLCs, the weird, I don't know, acronyms that they come up with just to shorten things, but in everybody else's mind, it's not shortened because you have no clue what it means. So I had to try and decode all of the teacher things, so that was interesting and hard to do. After that, um, I had my interviews. My first one was with Miss Allie Webb. She teaches AP US History here at Frisco, and she was my teacher last year, so she was a good comfort zone kind of person. Uh, it was great to go to her and not really have to worry about what, how I was doing or um, what I was saying. It was sort of like a trial interview, which was really nice. After that, I did Miss Megan England. She also teaches here. Um, before she taught AP um, Econ, this year she teaches AP US, and I think she has one level of, or one class of regular US. So she was also another um, good one to talk to, and she kind of gave me a different perspective because everybody else on this list is either married or has kids or something like that, and she is still single and uh, it's just trying to teach and it was fun to get that kind of perspective. After that I had Mr. Gabe Fain. He's over at Heritage. He teaches AP Euro and AP Euro can be daunting so I applaud him for actually liking that and he was interesting to talk to because he was a department head and he just gave me again a different insight on what it was like to not 
teach U.S. He was the first person I talked to that didn't um, teach U.S. So that was interesting. And then after him, I talked to Miss Emily Snyder, who is my mentor now. She is at Independence and teaches AP US, AP Psych, regular psych, and I think that's it. So she is one that I felt the most connection with. She was my literature teacher in eighth grade at Pioneer Heritage. So I had already had her, I was already comfortable with her, but I hadn't seen her in a while. So um, it was nice to sort of catch up. And then after her, I had Miss Kelsey Decker. She's at Centennial. She just taught on level U.S. history. I think she was the only um, on level U.S. history teacher at Centennial. And she really emphasized about how it was important to have a work life and then a personal life. She didn't like the idea of bringing work home every night. She had four kids and just um, wanted to spend time with them. Didn't necessarily want to worry about work at home. So it was interesting to get to talk to her and see her perspective as she um, really emphasized on that. And then next was Mr. John Irish, who is a total 360 for Ms. Stecker. He is an AP writer for AP US. He teaches AP US, but also has his master's in AP Euro, or not AP Euro, but European history, US history, and then I think it's like American Civil War I can't remember. It was something to do with the Civil War. Um, very specific. So he was great to talk to because he emphasized education and how important it was as a teacher to continue your education. Uh, so that was very interesting. And then after Mr. Irish was Miss Shannon Rosenfeld, and she was also at Centennial. She taught AP US and regular US, or no, she just taught AP US. And, um, she was different because she really liked how the AP students um, worked. She didn't necessarily love all the paperwork and all the daunting things that come with teaching regular. So she was also a department head and she gave a lot of insight on what it was like to have AP and be a department head. She got to be with the upper level of everything, I guess, so that was interesting. What I learned from my assessments and my interviews was, um, first off, one of the um, most recent research assessments that I did were, was over 504 students, which is on the um, act that pretty much says you can't discriminate against students for having learning disabilities, whether that be permanent or temporary. So I didn't even know that 405 504 students existed, much less what it was. It was interesting to find out that even if you had a sprained wrist, you fall or you fell under that category. And um, it was a very wide range of ADD, ADHD, how to deal with these students, um, what the process was to get to become this kind of student. The next uh, assessment I did was why teachers were mainly women. It was interesting to see uh, like the history of being a teacher. Back in the early days it was mainly men because men like ran the society back then and then as wars started to break out they had to go away and women took their place and once they got back women kind of just stayed there and held their ground and men became more of the principals, superintendents, that kind of thing. Uh, and women stayed where they were as teachers. Next I learned about the different kinds of teaching styles, whether it be authoritarian, um, I can't remember all of them, but those sort of different teaching styles and how you can use both of them, how um, they've evolved over the years. It used to be more lecture, more notes, more um, I guess just sit and listen to what I have to say. Now it's gotten more interactive, there's more group work, you use technology more often, things of that nature. The next thing I learned was being a teacher is more than just the classroom. There's a lot of extra time that teachers put in that students really never see, whether it be planning during the summer or during their conference period 
or um, doing the paperwork that's required of pretty much any teacher. The amount of work that a teacher has to do if a student fails their class for even six weeks is just insane. It's crazy. And they have like a hundred and some odd students, most teachers do. So that's just crazy that it's probably 25% of actually being in the classroom. Um, the next thing I learned was you need to, as I said earlier, be prepared to put in a lot of extra hours. You take the grading home with you. Uh, if they take tests, you take tests home. It's really hard to separate those two worlds because for me, I could see my perfectionist um, tendencies. I would want to take that home and finish it as quickly as I could instead of just taking a break, letting work stay at work, and staying home at home. So that continues to the next point. Um, you need to be able to put your work down. You need to be able to separate the two worlds. And then you as a teacher need to continue to learn. As Mr. Irish said, he was at SMU trying to get his master's degree, his third master's degree. And he emphasized the, impor the importance of continuing to keep up with your field so that way you can teach the students better. And then I had teacher and first articles of the Constitution and a world map, or a U.S. map. So as I said earlier, Miss Emily Snyder is my mentor. Um, so I interviewed her and immediately just really loved her and wanted to um, have her be my mentor. Uh, we connected. And she was the best fit because I just felt comfortable around her. I knew that she would push me, but she knew me, and she knew that I had a good work ethic. And she just was very um, understanding of what kind of student I was, what kind of mentor, mentee I would be. Uh, and she was just, she felt like the right one. So the first couple mentor visits was a lot of, um, open communication. We had to talk about the mentor handbook. We had to run over all of the expectations that she had of me. We had to do a lot of um, planning for how this was going to work out. Um, we had to talk about my original work and my final product. We still haven't really ironed out my final product yet, but how to do lesson plans, all that fun stuff. And then over the course of the next few um, visits, I sat in on department meetings. My second mentor visit, I believe, was a department meeting. And it was interesting to see the entire US team get together. Normally, I see three teachers when I go. And it was interesting to see them all work together. And like I said, seeing the background work, uh, the planning in December that they were doing for March, how they have an overview of how they want all of the calendars to work out and they set that in place so early. For my original work, I did a unit, or I will do a unit lesson plan. I turned in my first lesson yesterday, and that was over Nixon and his administration. And it's challenging to do the lesson plan that I'm doing because I'm doing Modern America with a technology emphasis. And I don't necessarily love modern America. I'm not real great with technology, and I've never been in a regular U or history class. So these are totally, totally out of my comfort zone. I have, I just had no clue what to do. I didn't know how easy to make it or how hard to make it. What I thought was too much was probably way too much for them. I just needed to figure everything out. And that was a huge challenge this, uh, these past couple of weeks because I just didn't really know what I was doing or how much of it to do. That then flows into my final product. I hope to be able to teach a class, um, whether that be the class of teachers that I normally see or an actual class, um, like give them a review before an EOC. That would be great. So still got to iron a couple things out there. And that is it. So thank you for listening and I hope you enjoyed. And that